Hey guys, Chris from Adapt Solution here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 3 from the Jan 2008 PUA paper 2. If you want to see the solutions to the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so they tell us that Sharon Kelly runs a medical laboratory. She records the following incomplete opening entry at the start of her accounting year. So they give us a general journal for Sharon Kelly. So we're seeing cash, laboratory buildings, medical tools, account receivable, office furnishings, stock of medical supplies, all assets. And of course, in the debit column, because assets have debit balances. Then we have bank overdraft, five year, 10% bank loan, accounts payable, which are all liabilities, which have credit balances. But they did say it was an incomplete entry, right? Incomplete opening entry, sorry, because we're missing the capital. And of course, the first part of the question, part A, tells us to calculate Sharon Kelly's capital as of November 1, 2007. Show workings. It's just three marks. So we know what that is. Capital is equal to assets minus liabilities. So you can head up Sharon Kelly, calculation of capital as of 1 November 2007. So we're just going to take the assets, right? So the assets, we have this batch of items here, cash, lab buildings, medical tools, account receivable, office furnishings, and stock of medical supplies. So we're going to put those things here, cash, lab buildings, medical tools, account receivable, office furnishings, stock of medical supplies, and take a subtotal. Next, we're going to put our liabilities, okay? So liabilities, we have bank overdraft, five-year 10% bank loan, and accounts payable, subtotal 57,006. And all we have to do is subtract, and we're going to get our capital balance. So it should, be, it should have been labeled capital. Capital. Uh, yeah. 1 November 2007. And we're good to go. Okay, let's take a look at part B. So part B says, using the vertical style, prepare the classified balance sheet, statement of financial position, for Sharon Kelly as of November 1st or 7th. So basically they want us to now use the information we just calculated above and put it in a proper balance sheet. Okay, so I'm going to do this balance sheet in two ways. Both of them will be in order of permanence. One will be the net asset presentation. So basically the exact same working from above, assets minus liabilities, but things classified as non-current and current assets and non-current and current liabilities. <laughs> and then below, the second version will be the assets equal to capital plus liabilities. So the financing version, all right? So I'm not doing order of liquidity. If you want to see that, message me. I'll see what I can work out for you all. But apart from that, let's get into it now. So of course, head up, Sharon Kelly, statement of financial position as at 1 November 07. First thing up is the non-current assets. Now, what do we have? I'm seeing laboratory buildings and medical tools and office furnishings, okay? So let's populate those items. Yeah, laboratory buildings, medical tools, office furnishings, subtotal. Now, current assets, what do we have? We have cash, we have accounts receivable, and stock of medical supplies. So those three things will go in our current assets section, right? Stock, debtors, cash, in order of permanence, right? Uh, we're going to add that subtotal to the non-current non asset subtotal, sorry, to get total assets. All right now, let's deal with the liabilities. Starting with the non-current liabilities, we have one, a five-year 10% bank loan. So five years means it's non-current, right? So we're going to put that there. And then current liabilities, we have bank overdraft, 5,400, and accounts payable, 13,002. So we're going to put both of those in. Get a subtotal and add that to the 39,000 that we just had above there, giving us 57,6. And when we subtract that from the 127,8, we're going to get net assets. And of course, that's the same figure we found just now when we did the calculation of capital in part A. So what we have to do is simply put finance by capital and put the same figure that we got above in part A right there. Okay, I'm going to shift this to the left-hand side. I'm going to pull up my other format, which again is just slightly different. And I'm just going to go through that so you can have a comparison of the two mom formats, okay. Okay, so I'm just running through this particular statement of financial position, again, headed up properly. Now, you don't have to do both ways. I'm doing both ways for the sake of illustration. Uh, and I'm also not gonna um, go through it um, as, well, I'm gonna go through it more quickly, right? So non-current assets, we have the three items there, subtotal, current assets, we have the three items there, subtotal, total assets. Now, unlike the left-hand side, we're gonna cut this top half here, and we're gonna start with the capital here, right? Finance by capital and liabilities, Capital is 72. And now we're going to add the liabilities, starting with the non-current, then going with the current, 
and we're going to add 57.6 to 70,200, and that's going to give us 127.8, which matches with the total assets. So again, remember, assets are the resources of a business. Where do these resources come from? Or where does the money to buy these resources come from? It comes from either the owner via capital or from entities other than the owner, creditors via liabilities. So the value of assets, the money to buy the assets came from capital and liabilities. So that's why the accounting equation holds. That's why the balance sheet must balance. The value of assets is equal to the value of the money used to buy them, the capital plus the liabilities. Okay, we have one more part of this question, part C. It's a bit of transaction analysis and some calculations. So let me pull it up and we'll take a look. Okay, so part C is telling us the following transactions took place in the first two weeks of November. Okay, I'm just going to show you all six transactions. Okay, uh, I'm not going to go through them one by one now because I'm going to have to do that when I'm doing the working. So I'll, I'll try to save some time that way. Now it says on the answer sheet provided, which I, I have recreated, identify the accounts affected by each transaction state the new dollar value of these accounts in each case. The first one is done for you, that's 10 marks. Okay, so the first item up says a medical tool was sold for 2,000 in cash. So they want you to identify the accounts affected. Let's start there. So if we sold a medical tool for cash, medical tool and cash were affected. So cash and medical tools. Now I, I kind of set it up like a journal entry to put any debit first and the credit second. That's not something you had to do. It's just something I wanted to do. All right. Now, the cash balance initially was 9400 So if we sold that item for $2,000, we are going to add 9400 to 2000 or 2000 to 9400 I get a new value of 11400 Now, the medical tools value, that was 29800 if we sold medical tools, it's going to decrease the value of medical tools that we have. So we're going to do 29.8 minus the 2,000, and that's going to give us 27.8. Okay, so you see how we're supposed to work it, right? Okay, next transaction. Sharon Kelly deposited 5,400 of her personal savings into the bank to pay off the business's overdraft. So Sharon Kelly is depositing 5,400 of her personal savings. Anytime the owner puts in his or her personal resources into the business, that's capital being introduced. That capital, therefore, is increasing. The capital balance was 70. It was 70 to be calculated, right? So first of all, let's identify that capital is increasing. And the bank overdraft, if you're paying off the bank overdraft, that's a liability and it's going down, which will require a debit. Now, again, we would ask to analyze debits and credits. I'm just doing it a bit extra, right? So don't panic if you didn't figure that piece out. Now, the bank overdraft, how much was that again? That was, oh, it was 5,400, and we're paying off the whole amount because Sharon put in a whole 5,400, which means are we going to see negative 54 plus 54 because a bank overdraft is a negative bank balance. So we have minus, minus 54, that's what the brackets indicate, negativity, plus 54. We're putting in 54 more, so the negative and positive will cancel out. So we're actually going to be left with zero in the bank account. Capital, however, was 70,002. And we're adding 5,400 to that. That's going to give us 756, if I'm correct. Yes, there you go. Lovely. Okay. Item three medical tests costing 2,000 were carried out for client Kelsey Morris, who will be paying in December 07. Now, we are Sharon Kelly, and she runs a lab. If she carries out medical tests, that's how she earns her revenue, or at least it's one way that Sharon earns revenue. Now, it was these tests costing 2000 were carried out for a client. The client is paying in December, but we are currently in November. So if the client is not paying us now, it's almost like we made a credit sale. So that's a crude revenue. So that's going up as an asset. And if an asset increases, you have to debit. So we're going to put a crude revenue or account receivable, as I have here actually. Yeah, well, six or one half of us not yet, right? And the credit has to go to revenue earned right so i have revenue earned there right because that's what we, we provided a service and earned revenue and when revenue is earned you have to it increases and you have to credit revenue when it's earned now account receivable had 18.2 and we did 2000 worth of services for sharon so we're going to add 2000 there now revenue had no balance at start so we're just going to put in 2000 there so 18.2 plus 2 is 22 for accounts receivable and revenue earned is just 2000 all right okay following from then on to item four 
Building insurance, 1350 was paid in cash. Now, insurance is an expense. It's being incurred, it's being paid as, as well. So we have to debit insurance expense and we're gonna credit cash, all right? So again, you don't have to worry about debits and credits. I'm just doing that to be extra. So building insurance expense had no opening balance. So we're just gonna have the 1350 being added to zero. Cash, now don't forget, even though the balance sheet here says cash was 94, don't forget, up in the first transaction, cash ended up being 11.4 because we sold some medical tool there for 2,000. So we had 11.4. So what we're going to have to do here is take that 11.4 and minus 13.50 because we are paying an expense. And if we pay an expense, your cash goes down. Okay, next, item five. Stock of medical supplies of 2,600 was bought on credit from Anne Charles. Okay. So medical supplies is an asset, if we're buying it on credit or not, the asset is going up, so you have to debit there. Now you're buying on credit from Anne Charles, so Anne Charles is our creditor, accounts payable, so that's a liability and that's going up. And when a liability increases, you have to credit. So you're going to see debit to the stock of medical supplies, credit accounts payable, okay. Now again, we didn't have to analyze debits and credits, I'm just doing it to give you a little extra practice. Now, stock of medical supplies was initially 4,400 and we are buying 2,600 more. So we're going to see 4,400 plus 2,600 giving us 7,000. Now, accounts payable, that was 13,002. And we, uh, well, we now owe more money because we just bought on credit again. So that's going to be 13,002 plus 26 and that's going to be 158. Now, the last item here, a check for 9,800 was received for office furnishings. So I guess we're, oh, office furnishings sold. So we're selling some of the office furnishings. Now, if we receive a check, that means bank is going up because we're receiving money. Bank is an asset. If the asset is increasing, you have to debit the asset account. Office furnishings is being sold, so it is decreasing. It is an asset. And to record a decrease in an asset, you have to credit the asset account. Okay, so let's put the debit to bank, credit to office furnishings. Now, bank, we had zero. Remember, it was an overdraft at first. We paid off. Well, Sharon paid off the overdraft. And now we are collecting money. So the bank is going up 9,800. So we're going to have 9,800 now. Uh, office finishings was 11,500. And it's going down. So now we're going to be left with 1,007. So not sure what we're going on there, but that's about it for this question. Okay, guys. So there you have it. That's the solution for question three from the Jan 2008 PUA paper two. If you have any further questions on it, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you when I have a chance. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to check out my website where you'll find some useful POA handles. Anyway, guys, as per usual, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.